Good morning, friends. Welcome to the pregame show. I'm Chart Gal Lori, and you are at the pregame show, and I have an errant bar there. It's going to drive me nuts. All right. It is Tuesday, March 1st, 2022, 8.23 a.m. Eastern, 6.23 a.m. Mountain Time. You're at the pregame show, and what we do here is I go over the indices, commodities, crypto, movers and shakers of the day, and I answer as many requests as I can at the end, and typically we're done in 25 minutes from 8.30 to 8.55, and then Dan will go live in our chat room. So I rip through things really, really fast, and First and foremost, thank you for being here. And if you could hit that like button, I would greatly appreciate it. Hit that subscribe, notify button, and let's do an audio visual check, please. Hey, Night Truck, Blue Dog, Roger, Greg, Matt, Mark. Hey, Wave. It is a beautiful day to be alive. Steven, Amira, Asia, Mary, Dino, Luciano, Mustang, Keggers. Yeah, Wave, I like the idea a lot, especially with the oil prices shooting up. I like shorting airlines and crews. Airline and cruise lines, all travel. Hey, Chuck, now I can get started. And there's my girl, Tammy. Hey, AR, I am a mama bear. And I embrace that title. Hey, Ra. Joe, Anu, Winston, Jorge, Scott, Matthew, Cedric. Thank you, thank you. I like Neo. I do like Neo. Lucid's getting hit hard on earnings. And I don't know if that would be a boon for the other EV names, but as Dan covered in the market review video yesterday, that he thought our EV names were getting a boost because of the big oil price push. Oh, I should also mention that I'm trying a new sound setting uh, with a noise gate to try to block out some of the background noise. There was some humming I was told from yesterday. So if I go in and out, please let me know and I will just take off that filter and that way we have no gaps in my sound. Uh, Steven, I don't know if the airlines are still correlated to XLF. It's a day-by-day -day basis, not all the time, but we can take a look at it. XLF overall has been a little bearish. It's getting kind of beat up. We may get a bounce on XLF, so I'm kind of on the fence with my JPM short idea today. Hey, Cedric, you really do like HUT, don't you? We all need our specialty areas, and I'm all about specializing in a name, and this is a great name to be in. Now, it could be a daily bear flag, but with last night's Bitcoin action through the roof, this could see more of a follow through, because it only has a 6% bounce, and if you look at Mara, 8%, Riot, 6.7. So I have Riot as a queen of the mountain trade because of crypto strength overnight and it's not um it's not running like mara was running this morning so i think it has a little more runway left so it's definitely one of my names to look at but going back to hut 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 we have resistance 658 664 i don't know if this wick really happened on a lot of volume because i'm i'm going to disregard that so 658 664 support 640 and 626 Thanks, Mary, for that news. Rivian got a price cut. All right. You're a perma bear, Stephen. It's nice to know what you are because some people are in denial, absolute denial as to what they are, and that's not helpful. So it's good to know at least where your bias is and then keep it in check, you know. Wave, you know what? On this one, uh, I don't want to say falling wedge. But he's, it's getting these lower lows without a lot of follow through. So below 2029, we hit 1982, not a lot of follow through. through. In pre-market, 1980, not a lot of follow through. So I don't, I was reading that uh, CCL has, a, I don't want to say a presence, but that this Ukraine and Russia war could be impacting CCL. The top 10 companies that will get impacted or should get impacted by this war. And CCL was on that list. So I don't know if they have, excursions over there that are getting canceled or what but i would think in general with the actual oil price going crazy that these names would get hit especially the airlines so 4330 is key support on luv let's look at delta 3902 united oh that's a nice tight eq resistance 4480 he supports 4349 and 4324. So maybe shorting 
here, shorting the hourly, the 30 minute 50 MA. Yeah, we're getting pinched right here below the hourly 50 MA. So we'll see. We will see. Good morning. You're welcome. <laughs> you know what? MG, that's so funny. MG says my husband needs to help me on that football cadence. So when I would listen to my favorite Drew Brees and uh, even Peyton Manning, it's they would say blue 80, blue 80, and it sounds like they're saying olede, olede. And so anytime I hear a football cadence, I do olede, olede. Okay, y'all ready to get started? Let me check. I got a message. I want to make sure everyone can hear me okay. Aw. Well, I just got an apology from someone who was kind of snippy with me about a war post. And it's okay because I recognize that a lot of us are on edge. And so that's why I have Do Good Things as my number one reminder today. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about a lot of things, but let me get it kicked off right. This is who I am. I'm Chark Al Lurie. I'm part of the Chark Guys community, and we teach technical analysis. And I am having so much fun with Trade of Eight, and I'll have to get back to that in a minute, but or get actually do a little presentation on it and share it with you, what I'm discovering about it. But let me go back to ES. And so what I do is I go over the... Fab for indices, commodities, crypto, and movers and shakers of the day. We have some awesome mods in the room, and they can usually help you with whatever question you may have. These are experienced and distinguished members of TCG that volunteer their time to mod this. <laughs> Shorting AMC. We'll have to look at look at it. We will have to look at it. So. The reason it's 25 minutes long, this show, is because Dan goes live at 7 a.m. Mountain Time, 9 a.m. Eastern, and we have approximately three to four live shows per day where all of your requests get answered. So this show is not about that. We're about just getting ready for the trading day, and I always say I wake up in the morning and I find all the puzzle pieces dumped on the floor and I start putting the puzzle pieces together best I can. It doesn't mean the lay the what I lay out is going to happen as such. I was thinking this morning, I didn't share the story. I told you all it was a stressful weekend. My nephew got hurt. He had got a stress fracture in his leg playing football. We were out at the football field and we were walking by and these two women started like punching each other, spitting on one another. It was nuts. I mean, these women are like affluent ladies. Not that that matters. Affluent people can be trashy, but they were throwing blows and spitting on each other. And it just reminded me this high intensity stress that everyone's feeling because of the war. Of course, I feel no stress compared to the people of Ukraine and even the Russian soldiers' families and the soldier, everybody. I feel sorry for everybody. So I just want to remind you today, I guess I'm done with my little pity party over this, feeling super sad, and I'm going to do good things. So my plan is to run out to Starbucks today and pay for somebody's coffee behind me. So maybe there's one little act of kindness that we can do today and spread some joy and some love. And I want you to know I'm happy you're here. And if you could hit the like button and show me a little love, I'd appreciate it. So if you're interested in my chart setup, you can click in the description of this video below and you can get a copy of a PDF sent to you for my chart setup and what indicators I use and why I use them. So what's going on? ES daily lower high is the most likely scenario with an asterisk. Do y'all remember yesterday I was like, I see a bearish setup here, head and shoulders, diamond bearish reversal pattern. And when I got to VIX, I'm like, this is perplexing because VIX had a head and shoulders and it was throwing off. It was the fly in my ointment, I think is what I called it because everything else was lining up so well and VIX wasn't. VIX looked bearish. And I use the VIX to trade uh, futures often, and I'm using it more and more every day. Well, the fly in the ointment for the bear case today is Apple. Apple looks good. I don't see NASDAQ rolling over if Apple looks good. So I think aggressive bears can be looking to top fish. Let's go look at it on the daily. So what we're looking at is a lower high in this area potentially compared to 448450. Your key supports are 432250 and 4310. 
So we kept getting these tiny little higher highs last night and we got a higher high by $14 here and they just weren't getting follow through. And actually it looks like an hourly potential hourly bear flag right now on ES. So these tiny bull breaks with very little follow through, it just made everything look like potential rising wedges. And you could really see it a little bit better on NASDAQ. I started drawing the top line, but the bottom line wasn't as clear. I guess it is clearer clearer on the hourly than the two hour something like that so we were just getting these tiny higher highs without a lot of follow through and it made me look bearish overnight i'm now out of all of my shorts and we're popping here now i also want to remind you that we have um let's see here we have State of the Union addressed by the President of the United States t this evening, and we have an OPEC meeting tomorrow, not counting the countless news stories that are coming out like crazy. I have never seen this much news since I started helping with the news in TCG over a year ago. I mean, hundreds of posts this morning about Ukraine and Russia. So we're just going to get keep getting pummeled by news headlines and like Dan said those things can be recycled often so I'm just going to stick with the charts it makes my life a little bit easier and we do have a lot of economic data this week we have non-farm payrolls on Friday I believe we have jobless claims on Thursday we have Fed uh, speak today Bostic is speaking at 2 p.m Eastern just lots of stuff and so I just want to remind you, you can keep your hand on your wallet unless it's a super, super high conviction trade. We don't have to trade every minute of every day unless it's a super high conviction trade. Just stay relaxed and stay in the pocket today. All right, aggressive bears are top fishing. Conservative bulls are waiting to buy the potential daily higher lows. Let's go look at that on ES. We talked about a daily lower high potential, but now we've bounced enough to give ourselves room for a daily higher low so if you're more comfortable playing bullish you could wait for a potential pullback on es if you're more comfortable playing bearish you can top fish any type of runner runner today apple looks super healthy here it'll be hard for nasdaq to fully roll over as long as apple's holding up so let's go look at apple right here so do y'all remember yesterday tesla that hourly uh rsi i was like do I want to be bearish Tesla? And I'm like, no, I don't. I just finally, I said, nope, I'm not changing the game plan because of this RSI of 50. And we had that squeeze on Tesla. Apple looks exactly the same today. Apple looks like a pretty bullish trade setup today compared to pre-market level 163.20 and 162.43. You could look to bottom fish that. How many times do I tell y'all, We typically we go test that hourly 50 MA, we reject and we were rejecting here, 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 here. But once we get through it, that back test is typically a good area to buy. And look how the hourly 50 MA is curling up. I talk about the slope of the EMA, Sotima, and when it's turned up, that's positive. So Apple has a positive bullish Sotima that's curling up. RSI is curling up. RSI is holding 50. We have a squeeze. Apple is just set up very nicely. And that has me pumping the brakes on being an aggressive bear because I'm not going to fight Apple. And as Dan has been pointing out, and I've been pointing out on the swing report videos every single weekend, that we have a potential monthly bull flag on Apple. And it gives more credence to that thought because look here, on the weekly, we got a lower high and a lower low, and boom, they bought the dip. So Apple looks super, super bullish. Go back to my notes because I obviously have a little ADD this morning. So we talked about those rising wedges. Commodities are going absolutely berserk. I don't even know if that's a word. Did I spell it correctly? Mm, don't care. But I believe uh, wheat went limit up this morning. Uh, corn has gone limit up. We have just we have been getting lots of bullish commodities because I don't the war and all these other things. So if you're interested in trading uh, corn, some ways to trade it is the corn ETF and the wheat ETF is W E A T. It's wheat without the H. So corn, we have Archer, Daniels, Midland. They have exposure. They're in the commodity space. And we have BG. And if you go look at those three charts, they are going super, super bullish. So those are just some ways that you can trade commodities if, that, if that's something you're interested in. All right, VIX hourly EQ, the tiny bull break, no follow through yet. 
Yep, it's coming back. So we had this hourly EQ that was setting up when I was looking at it at 3 a.m. We got a little bull break and then now it's coming back. It was just a bull break by 20 cents. So let's say 32.50, let's write it down. Y'all know I like to write stuff down. I can see it in my head. Once I write it down, I can, I get an imprint. Kind of like that show with Stephanie Myers. What is Twilight? I get imprint. 32.50, 32.50. As long as these bears are defending 32.50, that is bullish for the market. And you TCG members, you can attest to this. I am posting more and more and more about Uvixi and SPY, and I am using Uvixi clues to trade SPY and trade futures, and it's working out swimmingly. And I plan to do a video on, on that very shortly. I just need some more examples for my video and uh, research. So the US 10 year is coming in pretty swiftly. I haven't talked about the US 10 year in a hot second, so I thought I'd bring it up today because look at that hourly bear flag potential the four hour however it was approaching oversold now we're getting a lower wick so if the u.s 10-year were to bounce that's typically bullish banks so when the u.s 10-year was flying over here that's when xlf had its strength and nasdaq had weakness because the rising yield is not good for tech companies that have high valuations and also the U.S. 10-year rising so swiftly, it pushes the feds to do those rate hikes and do them sooner. Well, now that we're pulling back so hard, that may stave off some rate hikes in the future. So I've been bearish XLF. I've been pretty clear with y'all that I think this is a diamond bearish reversal pattern. We have an inside week and XLF, again, has been pulling back and there's some rotation. Money is rotating out of XLF, but... It, we could get a bounce today with this U.S. 10-year bouncing. So my JPM bearish idea, I may not, I may have to scratch that. We'll take a look at how it's developing in pre-market and make a decision then. Bitcoin had a night. It had a wonderful night. Okay, right here. Bitcoin on absolute fire. I have Riot as a potential queen of the mountain trade today. And queen of the mountain, someone dubbed it queen of the mountain because I was using king of the mountain terminology. Basically, is some of the better setups that I see. So is Bitcoin our canary again? Look at this. Bull break on the daily. We got a bull break back here. I mean, it's just going. So ES hasn't got a daily bull break. NASDAQ hasn't. Dow hasn't. RTY hasn't. And we didn't look at those. If y'all want those levels, I can give them to you. On, RT, on uh, NASDAQ, your resistance 14327 is key. And support 14070. RTY key resistance 2064 support 202310 YM resistance 34065 and support 33527 so I mean if Bitcoin so Bitcoin is the other fly, fly in my ointment it's messing up my whole thesis Apple and Bitcoin because of Apple looks so strong on the hourly we got that squeeze we're holding the 50 RSI and Bitcoin has been absolutely nuts now i know there's some more implications with crypto and some people think the russians are buying bitcoin i don't know about all of those things nor do i need to know i just know that it's bullish and i'm going to ride the wave as long as i possibly can got a little one minute head and shoulders developing on nasdaq i just shorted it let me go i have it on another screen i'm looking at this right here and i'm just shorting it uh, NASDAQ futures, and I'm going to use 14182 as my stop. Okay, back to notes. Oil is on fire. CVX had a huge stock buyback announcement. So our two largest stock buyback announcements this year so far, guess what? Exxon and Chevron. Who knew? With oil going nuts, and they are just killing it. So definitely no bearish, no bearish XLE trades for me. XLE is super bullish. Be careful. That is some big news. And CBX is a large component of XLE. Target had an EPS beat. And then EPAM and RSX. Okay, EPAM kept, I, it was pulling up yesterday when I was looking at NASDAQ halts. This thing was halted. It was down 45%. And John in our room he made a good point he's like somebody knew something way back here on december 13th look at that look at that red volume we are down a 
We are down 72% since December, and we are down 58% in a week. <laughs> this thing is absolutely getting hammered. Uh, this is a ninja only trade. If you wanna see if you can bottom fish this, we are not in black dirt breakdown, but RSX is. The Russian ETF is in full black dirt breakdown. We broke this 1034. We may get a bounce out of this as well. Some RSX lotto calls would make sense. They have terrible implied volatility, meaning real high premium. So be careful with that. I would use a lemon order and let it sit there, see if you can get a good fill. But they're getting hammered. And this is a ninjas only who are really good at oversold bounces. RSX and EPAM, they could have good oversold bounces, and that is ninjas only. And I think that's it for my notes. Oh, and Lucid's getting hit hard due to earnings. And the RSI on Lucid gives it more runway to the downside, which makes it a queen of the mountain for me as well, because we had good bounces. If you look at Lucid compared to NIO, we were super close to a daily bull break. So that cooled off RSI, and look at the hourly. We're not oversold, and this is a two-hour potential bear flag. And that's why you see it over here. This will be what I will be watching at open is Lucid. This is what I'm going to trade today. Lucid and I'm looking bearish. That doesn't mean I'm going to be pig-headed bearish. If I'm wrong, I wrong, I'm wrong and I just get out of it. So I would love to top fish any type of bounce toward $25.75 or even $26. And I'm choosing this name to short. We're down 12% from after hours action, and we still got runway on the four hour, on the hourly, on the 15 minute even. Typically, when I bring you these names, they're already in the toilet. The RSI is already oversold. Well, not this one. Okay, just got stopped out of that NASDAQ short attempt. Just a quick, that's just a little flesh wound. Okay. Now let me go back to, I gotta do Bitcoin. Look at that chart unbelievable we broke through 44775 we stopped at 45,000 psychological on coinbase potential four hour bull flags well actually they confirmed and support 42850 ethereum man when i was drawing these resistances earlier they're already just breaking through all of them my goodness your next resistance is up at 3139 and your support 2855 Gold resistance 1935, 1976, support 1892 and 1884. Oil, we got through this recent high of $100.54. We hit 101.53 overnight. Your next resistance is up at 107.60. Actually, let me get you another one. This is where we really. Nope. Nope. That is it. 107.68. Nat gas. All right, resistance on that gas, 4552, 4596, support 434. Nice bounce on that gas, but again, it is all over the place for me. I just have no trade set up. We're in a monthly, we're starting out the month, of course, inside February's large range, and we could stay within this range. So how big was this range? 30%. So we had a 30% range in February, we could stay inside that range all month. And y'all know I don't like inside bars. When we're trading on inside bars, volume goes down. And it's like the drunk girl walking home from the bar. Sometimes you just, it's just very erratic as it tries to establish, as it probes the upper bounds of resistance and the lower bounds of support. It just kind of goes erratic in the middle. And I don't like trading like that. Apple, I went over. AMD, same thesis on AMD as yesterday. If you traded it yesterday as one of the queen of the mountains, congratulations. I still like it. That's a big, big buyback. 120.58 is your support. And then the next support, 119.20. The low of yesterday on any chart you're looking at, just go mark it. Just, just go mark up your chart. So the low was 119.20. Let's see right there. So I like AMD for continued to the long side. Doesn't mean I'll be right. CVX, it, okay, this could be a buy right here in pre-market. 
It's pulling back on that huge buyback announcement. This is a buy right here, in my opinion. 14493 support and 14401. And it may be pulling back because oil's pulling back. Oil just may need a breather and that may suppress CVX bull reaction to this bullish news. Resistance on JPM is 14080, then up at 142. Is this oversold on any time frame? Yeah, four hour. Okay, I can't go short here. Dang it. I'd love to short a bounce up to the 8 EMA around 142.90, but I, I can't shorten the hole. Lucid, I'm ready to short this. Okay, someone, when y'all ask me questions, the moderators, I would like to get your questions answered. Uh, weekly EQ is most likely 5572 support. Resistance support 3876. We have that lower high set at 4938. Now we're looking for a higher low compared to 3876. NEO. What was I thinking on NEO? Okay, this was yesterday's upgrade and it it was worked out perfectly for us and I like it for more strength. And I don't know if these EV names are getting bull lift on Lucid's bad news or what, or is it just because oil prices are through the roof and these EV names are getting a lift just like solar did yesterday. And of course we know REGI was bought out by Chevron. So that helped the whole solar uh, sector. And some of you got JKS and you messaged me. I'm so happy for you. And I still like Neo to the long side for a potential pullback by around $22. Okay. Riot is getting a bull push. It's getting a little bit bigger of a bull push, but I think this has runway left as well relative to Bitcoin strength. If Bitcoin were to start pulling back, I would be careful. Support 1835, then 1761. Resistance 1862. And then over 1862, your next resistance is up at 1985. Thank you, MG. <laughs> uh, when anybody asks us should they sell? We will always tell you yes. At least I will. I will always tell you yes. Because if you're asking, you're in a jam, you're in a pickle, and your position size is probably too large. I have enough experience to know when those questions come at me like that, that's typically what's going on. So if you're asking if you should sell, I'm probably going to say yes. All right. So hourly inside bars on target, resistance 22856, support 21889. Awesome, beautiful reaction to an EPS beat. So mind you, they missed their uh, revenue. It was like 31 billion is what they had and it was expected 31.39 billion. So they missed it by 390 million. So that wasn't a big miss, but they really crushed on EPS and I'm assuming they got it up. So target, I like bullish on pullbacks 219.09 and 218.89. Tesla, again, getting a lift. They had the Gigafactory news yesterday, and of course, oil prices, they're getting a big lift. So back burner trade setup is on deck. So let's go set that alert. Tell me when RSI reaches 30 on the five minute chart, and then I'll evaluate. It doesn't mean I'll take the trade. It, if the market's pulling back hard, I'm not gonna take that trade. But that's just how I set an alert. I can set it and forget it, and XLF, I would watch this bounce. Okay, now the bounce is happening. So we were watching that four hour oversold on US tenure, on XLF, on JPM, on Bank of America, on Wells Fargo. I went through all those charts and I was bearish XLF because of that weekly chart, but we're getting a bounce. And it's, to me, this is just a relief bounce. So I would look to short around 38.57. This is just a relief bounce in my opinion. All right, you're fine. Okay, CGC. I don't know who had earnings this morning. I'm sorry. Uh, I think Mary posted it earlier. We have some U.S. names that got have earnings, so I'm not really sure. I didn't review them or read them. I've been knee deep in Ukraine news, which hasn't been fun. But we have resistance at 731, support at 679. We get a weekly, no, weekly lower low. Daily, we're looking for a daily higher low compared to 642, but I would not say the bulls have given themselves enough room for it. They definitely have not. So we could roll over to lower lows very easily. Your support from hourly 697, 679, resistance 723, 731. 
Uh, Jim, I'm sure you can. Toss is super powerful. It's just hard. It's harder for me to code because the more power something has, the less user friendly it is. So Toss is definitely the most powerful platform out there. But I don't know how to set it, but I'm sure it's possible. I'm not sure, Mary. Yep, Target had earnings, Chris. That's what I said. Yep. How would I trade it, Long Island guy? I would trade it through Riot. So I like doing the um, stock exchange names because I don't, unless I'm doing options, I have a small fee. But if I just do comments, I have no fees whatsoever. Compared to a Bitcoin transaction I did this morning, I finally sold some and it was like $200 in fees. It's terrible on Coinbase. So I would trade it through Riot. And I would look for pullback buys. And then you could even set an alert on this one. Say, tell me when RSI gets oversold. That would be a, a back burner would be a way to do it. And back burner on Bitcoin, I would set for 15 minutes. A lot of our room was trading five minute RS, oversold RSI overnight. Now I'd wait for 15 minutes. Okay. LHX for George. Okay. Aerospace and defense makes sense while the why this thing is going crazy. Blue sky breakout. And there's not much to not like about blue sky breakout. And now RSI is not as important. Support 24833 and 24943. I had ideas yesterday of shorting crowd and Palo Alto network. And how did that work out for me? Not very well. I didn't short them because it, they just kept they took off. So these names will at some point have consolidation. They will. But I'm just not going to step in front of that bull train. As long as the hourly EMAs are below on whatever name you're looking at that's war related, LMT, hourly EMA holding. And then we've got the gun names. They're, they're seeing strength as well. Smith and Wesson, this is not a comment about guns. Don't care. Don't want to talk about that. I'm just trading charts. Look at POWW. That's a cheap name. So these names that ran real hard, you can just go set a five minute oversold. So they tell me when and then evaluate it when you get the alert. Is it still something you're interested in? The Palo Alto, uh, CrowdStrike, um, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, all of these names, the uh, gun names, even the fertilizer names, you could set five minute oversold if it's so. Macron, not so much, okay. If it's appealing to you, CRM had earnings. Yeah, MOS, because a lot of fertilizer comes from uh, Ukraine is my understanding. When does CRM have earnings? They have it after hours today. You see the little moon right there? So after hours today, we're running into the underside of the daily 21 EMA. You have resistance at 214.57, and we're getting over that now. In pre-market, it looks like people are buying the dip going into earnings. So caution. I don't like it. When things run into earnings, then it can be, well, I guess you wouldn't say run into earnings. It has dropped how much? Since the last earnings 26 percent so i doubt this is priced to perfection so it could be a good lotto play but i don't trade earnings for the most part and lmt of course is running hard 52 week highs are we at all-time highs no we're not at all-time highs 44253 is the all-time high so watch for that all right, that's it for me. Dan will be live in three minutes. Thank you for joining me. Please hit the like button. Again, if you're interested in my chart setup, you can look in the description below, click on that link, and it'll tell you everything you ever wanted to know about my chart setup. And if you want to give me a follow on Twitter, this is who I am, Chart Guy Laura. You can check us out on chartguys.com. I love you all. You stop losses and do good things. Oh, lady, oh, lady. Hup, hup.